Ahoy, hello dear listeners, welcome to another podcast. And as you can probably guess, today it will be all about the money, especially about the Czech crown. So let's give it a go. At first, let me tell you one interesting thing that is not exactly connected to the Czech crown and that's the fact that actually when it comes to USD or the American dollar, have you ever wondered why is it called dollar? And have you ever wondered, does it have any connection to the Czech Republic? Well, if you have, congratulations. And if you are not aware of this, let me enlighten you. So when it comes to dollar, the name actually comes from Tal or Tolar, a coin that was created in the 16th century around the year 1520 in a small Czech town called Yachimov. The coin became quite popular all around Europe. So Scandinavians, for example, were the ones who tried to adopt the style that was created in this small Czech town, which is located today in northwestern Bohemia. The name of Tolar or Talr came also to Netherlands and probably with settlers coming from this place to the USA came also the word dollar. And that's why there is the connection between Czech dollar and American dollar. So now you are a bit smarter again. And let's move to the Czech crown itself. And we have to make another trip back in time, this time to the year of 1892, to the times of pretty much the end of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. During this period of time, the Austrian-Hungarian Emperor Franz Josef I, or František Josef I in Czech, decided to have a new currency, which was called Krone or Koruna in the Czech language. That's pretty much the origin of the current Czech crown. Once that the Austrian-Hungarian empire ended, all of the other states moved to another currencies like Austrians and even guys in Slovakia today are using Euro. But we in the Czech Republic, we like the traditions and we are still keeping the old Krone or Koruna. Of course, with the time it changed a bit. It used to be Czechoslovakian crown or Československa Koruna. Then, of course, it came to be a Czech crown or Česká Koruna, which is it today. But the crown stem is still there. Even though we don't have king, we don't have emperor, it just simply comes from those times of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Let's take a look at coins at first. If you have ever had them in your hands, you are maybe familiar with the fact that there is one thing that they all have in common. And that's the fact that on the other side, on the back side of the coin, you can find every time Czech lion, the one with double tail. And if we will take a look at the smallest one Czech crown, which we call simply Koruna, on the front of this one, you can find a small symbol of literal crown. It should represent St. Wenceslav crown. And when it comes to the coin number two or Dvo Koruna, the one that has value of two Czech crowns, on the front you can find a great Moravian button jewel. And then there is Pieti Koruna or five Czech crowns. There is a symbol of Vltava, the river that goes through Prague and it's known in the English language as Moldau. If you have not heard yet the Moldau by Bedrich Smetana, then please do so because it's one of the iconic musical things coming from the Czech Republic. And then there is the 
Deseji Corona or 10 Czech crowns and on the front of this one you can see Cathedral of St. Peter and Paul which can be found in Brno, the second largest Czech city. And then there is 20 crowns or as we call it 20 or 20 Corona and if you have ever been to Prague it probably rings a bell because on the front you can see a statue of St. Wenceslav, which can be found on Wenceslav Square in the center of Prague. And then comes the coin with the currently highest value, that's 50 Czech crowns or Padesati Koruna as we call it in the Czech language. There you can see picture of Prague itself and there is written Praga Mater Urbium which means Prague the mother of towns. And now let's move to banknotes. Currently the one with the lowest value is 100 koruna or 100 Czech crowns and on the front you can see a picture of Charles IV, the most liked king of and emperor of the history of Bohemia or Czech kingdom. On the back of this banknote you can see a seal of Charles University, which was of course founded by Charles IV. And it was the oldest university in the Central Europe. It still functions, so if you would like to, you can still apply and be a student of Prague Charles University. Then there is Dvostovka or 200 korun českých or 200 Czech crowns. And on the front of this one you can see a picture of Jan Amos Komenský or John Amos Komenius in English. On the back you can see written Orbis Pictus which was the most famous book written by this author and there is also a drawing of an adult's hand passing to a child's hand and that's due to the fact that Jan Amos Komenský is known in the Czech history as a person who was really trying to make the education as effective and as pleasant as possible. The one of the main things that he was promoting is that there should be something called teaching as a gameplay, I would say. And it pretty much means that uh, you shouldn't be only restrictive when it comes to teaching children, that you should make it more joyful, that this, this way the children will actually learn more. Next one is Pietistovka, 500 korun českých or 500 Czech crowns. And on the front of this one you can find a woman, it's Božena Němcová, our most famous female author. On the back side of this banknote you can see a woman symbolizing all women characters in Němcová's book. Probably her most famous one is called Babička or Grandmother and it's the book that I believe pretty much all chicks have to read when they are at high school, so you can give it a go as well if you'd like. The another band note that you will probably see quite a lot is Tisícovka or 1000 Czech crowns. And on the front of this one you can see František Palacký, who was one of the main figures known in the movement of Czech national and cultural revival which occurred during the times of Austrian Empire when Czechs kind of seemed to start forgetting Czech language and Czech culture because uh, you know we were part of Austrian Empire so pretty much everything was in German and it was quite complicated for Czechs who wanted to keep their national identity during those times and František Palacký was one of the persons who were trying to make a difference in those times. On the back of this banknote you can see an eagle spreading its wings over the archbishop's castle in Kromněříš where a constitution preparing parliament of Austrian empire was held. And the next banknote is 
dvoutisícovka or 2000 Czech crowns and there is another woman on the front and it's Emma Destinová, famous opera singer. So on the back of this banknote you can find musical instruments. And when it comes to the banknote with the highest value, it's pětitisícovka or pět tisíc korun českých, 5000 Czech crowns. And on the front, if of course nobody else but Tomáš Garik Masaryk, the first Czechoslovakian president. And on the back side you can see Gothic and Baroque buildings in Prague, especially St. Vitus Cathedral or Svatovická katedrála, which you have most likely visited if you have ever been to Prague. But when it comes to the Czech crowns and Czech banknotes itself, I would say that you don't really need them that much, because whenever I am walking around the city, I pay pretty much everywhere with contactless card payment, or I am using um, my cell phone for payments or Apple Pay. Maybe for your first trip it's better to have some check crowns with you, but I don't think that you have to have an excessive amount because probably in most places you will be able to pay via a credit card or debit card. Okay, so now you know a bit more about the Czech culture. I hope that you will enjoy it the next time that you are in the Czech Republic and you will take a look at one of our coins or banknotes. Have a nice day and see you next time. And if you haven't done so, don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye.